Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 2021 6th Annual Black Sustainability Summit. We are glad to have you here and listening and tune in. My name is Danielle King, and I am an intern for Black Sustainability Inc. for the fall semester. And I'm glad, glad, glad to have you guys here. So I am with Mr. Chizuro OKK, and he will be doing a presentation on the Igbo diaspora and the Bantu, Fed Bantu Federation that will save Black America. And just a brief introduction on who this brother is. His name, he is Brother Chizuro of Egebe Abantu, will discuss ongoing work to organize the four major tribes of Black Africa, as well as integrating the Holocaust diaspora as not only family, but as invaluable resources. Calvary and Renaissance. It will also discuss the need for maroon society slash tribal nations to advance a successful, logical, sustainable case for reparations. So let's get started and let's hear from Chizuro Okeke and see what he has to say about this. Thank you so much for being here. Hello, Art. Right. Thank you for having me this year on this uh, Black Sustainability Summit. And thanks for that introduction. Um, I'm based in Jacksonville, Florida. And a little background on me, I moved here from California where I was born and raised. Uh, family's originally from Nigeria, uh, from the Biafra Igbo region. Um, growing up, I had been raised in organizations, uh, cultural organizations uh, that we brought over uh, from Africa, you know, clan organizations. Uh, and growing up, I always saw that, you know, there was a struggle to organize the diaspora. And I saw that us as African continental immigrants could probably contribute to something uh, of that nature. So that's been my journey so far. Uh, I moved to Jacksonville three years ago in 2018 uh, to play basketball, but also because it's, uh, it's more African people over here. So I saw it as a chance to possibly organize. Uh, I linked up with a brother named Barudi Katembo. He's a professor, academic scholar, uh, the author of Uwenzi, Scattered Assets, where he articulates a case for African diaspora and continental Africans to work together um, and how the diaspora could be an asset to uh, a renaissance in Africa. Uh, we're both part of a loose think tank called the Bantu Federation, where we were talking about uh, the need to redefine Africans using a more spiritual term, a more indigenous term, uh, whereas Africans is was like part of a nomadic uh, kingdom originally in North Africa to indigenous term. Uh, and with the indigenous term that refers to people who live up to a certain standard, the community built on the community laws. Uh, Bands are basically people who obey my rights. In Zulu, we call it Mugetto. In uh, Kikana, we call it Fukiansi, and Diba, we call it Omanawa. Uh, in Uganda, Rwanda, we call it Amateka. So these are variations of the one that I'm talking about, the one of laws that keep a community sustainable or connected. But so basically, you know, we have these variations of uh, divine order and divine laws. Ma'at, Fukiansi, Omanala, Nteto, Amateka, all these cultures in Africa, these, uh, these settlements and uh, societies, they have their own word for laws that the people have to obey, um, their own system of governance. I think the diaspora uh, in the Afrocentric movement, we've been uh, lacking that. 
So um, Bantu is the overall term to encompass people who, Black people who uh, adhere to the community laws that the people uh, come together and agree upon. Um, we had looked into the history of what they call Bantu people and said that it's a migration starting in Nigeria and the Cameroon area. Uh, they share this word in their, in their culture um, to the point of 300 million people have a similar word for it in Africa. And we said that could be an ethnic identity that unifies uh, Black people on a higher purpose. And then eventually, you know, it goes from a language group to being the whole continent as far as the network of people and communities and kingdoms and maroon societies globally. So that was my work with uh, Brother Baruti Kitembo in the Bantu Federation. But then there's another group which is called Egbe, a Bantu. And Egbe is a word that means, it means a lot of things. It means a political body, a society. It can mean a, like a protective society, like a leopard society, a government, um, or empire, a federation. And it just means a Egbe Bantu, the federation of people, uh, Black people who are upright and adhere to a certain law system. So um, we're trying to incorporate that under um, the various UNIA ACL governments that Marcus Garvey created. We're trying to put together a, or we are putting together an indigenous network of people who adhere to legal codes. And that includes like Maroon Societies in Trinidad that we've reached out to, Jamaica, Haiti, the whole island. <laughs> We're reaching out to people in the Caribbean and South America, Brazil, and also people based in Florida and in uh, particularly the southern states of the USA. We're trying to put together these sustainable communities and networks where we're all working together in concert with the, the continent. Now, in the continent, we mapped out four major cultures in Africa. Um, people that typically call Bantu, we renamed them Chiena Entu, which basically means the Entu language expansion that goes from Nigeria or the uh, Baida Biafra, that coastal region into Cameroon, all the way to Uganda, and all the way down to Zimbabwe, those are regional headquarters that we're uh, working with, establishing headquarters there. And then there's also um, the Nile that extends from uh, uh, like Ethiopia all the way to actually in central Nigeria. They have migrants from the Nile there. There's also the Odudua people, which includes the Akan, the Ashanti, uh, Benin Empire, the Yoruba kingdoms. Uh, although, yeah, so basically from Ghana and Ivory Coast all the way to Nigeria again. And then also in Northern Nigeria, we also have uh, a kingdom called Borgu Empire that we've been talking to. Uh, they represent the Senegal and Gambia River expansion, going from Senegal and Gambia through Mali, Burkina Faso, Northern Ghana, Northern Benin, all the way to Nigeria. So those are the four major cultural groups and uh, they all basically convene in Nigeria, which is a very diverse place. <laughs> so we're setting up a lot of bases in Nigeria uh, to work with the diaspora in a, in a concentrated manner. And all those, all those uh, formations will have the, the label UNIACL in some variation because the UNIACL uh, represents uh, a government in the sense that they have documents um, as far as a uh, working constitution, a set of principles, and a set of 
a declaration of rights, including self-determination, where you can come together in uh, these maroon societies or communities and towns and basically say that you're aligned in a league or a federation or an empire. Um, so that's basically what we're, what we're using the UNICL emblems and logos and name for. And also we wanted to focus on the Caribbean for the diaspora because the Caribbean is majority black, um, Haiti makes up 25% of the Caribbean and they have their own revolution, which was organized by you know, traditional chiefs. Uh, they, had, they held a ceremony called Boy Cayman and they basically organized all the chiefs. Even during slavery, they had a traditional government system and they started uh, their own empire. So Haiti represents a traditional uh, maroon society originally. And we're trying to get in with the traditional leaders and educators down there, and, uh, tie them into CARICOM. Uh, CARICOM and the African Union just had a summit where they're, they're um, looking at their cultural values and connections that we just talked about. And they're looking to basically integrate Haiti and the Caribbean uh, and the African Union into a, eventually we're looking at a super state or a global empire, a global nation. But these are the beginning steps and it's kind of fragile. They need, or we need uh, organizers people who organize on that level, educators to uh, educate about Africa and the cultural rights, rites of passage, uh, really focus on children, um, you know, economic strategies, um, things of that nature. They need what they're calling civil society or you know, citizens to organize themselves and integrate into that uh, CARICOM African Union platform. So that's what we're doing in Florida. We're organizing. We have people, you have different organizations like the Pan African Federalist Movement, um, Afrocentricity Internationals here. We have an EBO Association of Jacksonville. Um, we have a cultural center down here in Jacksonville. So we're looking at Jacksonville as a headquarters for a lot of organizing and tapping into the Caribbean community and the African American community, the African continental community. We're looking at bringing everyone this information or in the process of doing that. Um, and African Federalist Movement is a key organization because they're discussing a federation and bringing people together, these states together in the diaspora and the continents and incorporating the diaspora, organizing the diaspora in America and USA to be included. Um, now, as far as uh, highlighting the EBO contribution, uh, EBO is a general term that means like forest people, um, but uh, it's gone, through a, it's gone through a lot of different meanings, but in general today, it refers to a group of people in Nigeria who don't uh, typically have kings. Um, they distribute leadership into councils and you know, parent-teachers associations, basically. You have a, a, a council of elders called the OHA, uh, the OHA Neze system. That's an old system that's been politicized, but uh, they used to call it the OHA system, OHA. Um, they have a council of women, uh, the Umuada, that's U-M-U-A-D-A. -A. Um, they have the Umo Opara, the, that's U-M-U-O-P-A-R-A. -A. Um, they have age grade system that are I believe typically spaced out every four years. You have an age group of your peers. Um, 
to create their own laws and judgments. Uh, so all these different groups and councils are used to create a community where nobody, where everybody is relatively equal. Um, nobody is really jockeying for position of power that is distributed more evenly. It's not perfect, but we looked at that system as the one that helped uh, lead Haiti to freedom because they had so many different cultural groups and uh, kings and chiefs that they said, let's just distribute it, uh, the power evenly, or the leadership evenly. And they called that spirit uh, Igbo Grand Moon, which means you know, the Igbo grown man system where everybody's an adult and uh, the power is distributed evenly. So we look at that down here as a system, you know, the town hall system, uh, the parent teacher system, uh, as one that could gather people in uh, large numbers, even though a lot of people practice different spiritualities and uh, even a lot, lot of cultures that they brought down from Africa, we see uh, a kingless society where everyone's equal uh, is probably going to be the one that organizes the diaspora uh, the fastest and the most, uh, most sustainable. <laughs> um, so in general, um, that's my presentation. Um, I don't know if I missed anything, but if there's any questions, I'd be happy to take them. I would, uh, I would also like to shout out a radio network, um, KWAZ Radio Network. Uh, they do a lot of reading and studying groups and advocating for children and uh, black education. And I've teamed up with them. They even got a little online store that they're setting up. But KWAZ Radio Network, I'd like to check them out. They work with bb2me.com and a group down here called Melanated Conscious Society. So you're doing good work. Can you share your um, socials with people, please? Uh, <laughs> yeah, people can contact me on Facebook, uh, Confidence Chizoro Okeke. Uh, middle name is C H I Z O R O. Last name O K E K E. Um, that's uh, my Instagram uh, confidence ninety seven now. C O N F I D E N C E underscore nine seven, and the same for YouTube. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome.